coming to church. You know, you're not going to make God nervous by getting up and clapping your hands. You're not going to make God nervous by raising your hands and say, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for where you brought me from. And aren't you glad tonight where God has brought you from tonight? That God has brought you out of the life of sin and put your foot upon that solid rock. I'm glad tonight that I know that my Savior tonight, you know what? I've walked away for a lot of times and I walked in this whole world and thought I had everything that I need. But you know what I did? When I come to the realization that I needed a Savior. Yeah. And you know what? I'm glad that God one day reached down and he touched my heart. You know, I walked a lot of times and I wanted to be a Christian. And I used to think, Lord, I want to serve you, but I don't know how. You know, I said, Lord, I don't know how. I remember being as a young boy, probably 16 years old, and being in a truck with two preachers one time. And I began to cry, and you know, I didn't tell nobody. But I began to tell them, I said, I want to be a Christian, but I don't know how. I don't know how to pray. You know what, when you come to an altar of repentance and you cry out to God, I don't care where you're at, you can have repentance at home. But you know what, but you've got to repent. The Bible says to repent or perish. That is our choice tonight. We've got to repent of all the sins that we've committed, and you've got to be sorry for them, and not just play church, but you've got to be the church. Yeah, amen. 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 I remember one time as just a young boy, and I never told this before, but something happened <coughs> in my life, and it really burdened me. And I wasn't a, I wasn't a Christian at this time. I was still a young guy. I was still looking for something, hadn't found it. I remember going up on the hill, and I remember the devil plainly talking to me. And I know it was the devil, because he said, go ahead, take your life. Nobody loves you. But I'm glad the one day that I found Jesus, and I knew the one that loved me more than anything tonight, the only one that could change my life. I'm glad tonight that I found the man called Jesus. Aren't you glad tonight that you found the man called Jesus, that he found you, and he reached down, and he did something that nobody else could do. He changed my life around, and he'll change your life, too, if you'll only live. But children, you've got to let God work in your life. You've got to let God work in your life. You know, I went through a long time. I didn't tell people nothing about this. But you know what? I want somebody to realize something tonight. You may be going through something. Yes. Maybe you might be going through the same thing that I did. The devil's telling you to take your life. Mm -hmm. You take your life and you have no chance. Mm -hmm. You take your life and you have no chance. God's not going to tell you to take your life. He wants to save your life. Right. But you've got to listen to that voice. There's a lot, a lot of voices out there in the world today. And you know what? Just like I said this morning, the devil will sit up on one shoulder and God will sit up on the other. But you've got to know the voice of God. I'm glad tonight that I know the voice of God. He said, no, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. And a stranger, they'll not fall. Right. I'm glad tonight that I come to know that voice of God. But you know how I did it? By being obedient to God's word. By keeping the truth. I thank God for truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Aren't you glad tonight that you're free tonight? If God has set you free, then you're free indeed. You know what? We've got freedom. We've got liberty here tonight. But how many of us take care of that part of that liberty? A lot of countries today, you wouldn't have this liberty. I thank God for all the soldiers that died on that battlefield that we could have the freedom of religion that we've got today. Amen. A lot of people say, well, you shouldn't say that. Well, I do. Mm -hmm. I thank God because you know what? If somebody wasn't fighting for us to keep our freedom, then we might be just like a lot of communist countries. That's right. That if you was trying to serve God, you could be beheaded for it. Mm -hmm. If you was trying to pray and serve the Almighty God, and you wasn't doing it the way the government said, they could kill you for it. 
But aren't you glad tonight that you've got freedom? But can't you see how we push freedom aside? That we do when we come into the house of God, that nobody wants to do nothing for God. Look what he's done for you. Uh, look how he brought you from. Uh, and where everything that he's did in your life tonight. I thank God that I listened to that voice one day. And when God called me, uh, and he called me down that old world, uh, I had to make a decision in my life which way I was going to go. I had to make that choice. If I was going to go with God, or I could go with the devil and be lost and hit the devil's head with my eyes wide open because I failed to realize what God said to do, and I didn't want to do it. I wanted to listen to the old fleshly man. That old fleshly man, it'll get you in trouble a lot of times. You know what? Just like I said this morning, I've made a lot of mistakes. Been knocked down a lot of times. But I thank God, God picked me back up. Amen. You know, I thank God for that. I can't thank him enough. Right. That when I was out in sin, when I was doing things contrary to the word of God, God loved me enough to reach down and pull me out of that life of sin. But you see, children, when God calls you, there's a decision that you've got to make in your life. When God begins to knock upon your heart, he said today is the day of salvation. Pardon, not your heart. A lot of people have got a hard heart. Maybe because of things that's happened in their life. Maybe somebody even in the church has hurt you. But you know what? God's able to chastise that little hard heart. He's able to do something that man couldn't do. You know what? The only thing you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I want to go with you. You know what? There's not enough devils in hell that's going to keep me out of heaven. I've made up in my mind that I'm going to go all the way. With God's help, that's the only thing that I'm going to do. But children, I want you to know tonight, you've got to make it up in your mind what you're going to do. You've got to make it up in your mind that no matter what you go through, no matter how many troubles, no matter how many trials, you've got to believe tonight that God's got you by the hand. Now, aren't you glad tonight that God is still a prayer answering God and he can lead you along the way? Uh, but when God tells you to do something, you're the one that's got to make the choice. You're the one that's got to do it. I can't make it for you, but you've got to make it for yourself. That's right. And you know what? I'm glad that I found that truth. And you know what? The truth is the only thing that can set you free. There's a whole church world today that says they're serving God, but they're not serving Him in truth. I want you to go with me tonight by the help of the Lord to the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. And I want you to listen. Children, God soon to come back. And He's coming back after church has made Himself ready. I want to be ready to meet God when that, my time comes. He said, man, that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. You're going to go through trouble. Make it up in your mind that no matter what you go through, the old devil, he'll try to fight you in your home. The old devil, he'll try to fight you right in your own church. He'll try to get odd against one against the other. Get your eyes upon people. Begin to talk about people. But you know what, children? You can't do that. You've got to love one another. No matter what people do to you, you still have to love them. That's right. He said, love your enemies. Pray for them. That despitefully use you. No matter what people say. You know what? They, they spit upon Jesus. Yeah. They did everything to him. But you know what? The Bible says he never opened up his mouth. Sometimes this is our hardest problem right here. Yep. First time somebody does something to you, what do you want to do? You want to open up this old mouth. And this old tongue will get you in a lot of trouble. You say things that you shouldn't say. And you know what? That's what's happened to a lot of people today. They went on, things happened to them in their lives, but they're not willing, I'll say willing, to forgive somebody that's hurt them. You know what? God knows what every one of us has been through. Yep. How you've been hurt. That God can heal that hurt. Yep. But you can't hold on to that hurt. Let that hurt go. Because if you hold on to that hurt, it'll come bitterness in your life. Mm -hmm. And then you'll begin to hate that person as much as they hate you. Mm -hmm. And can't you see how the devil, how sly he is, 
that old devil, he'd been in this a whole lot longer than me. He'd been in it a whole lot longer than you. And can't you see today how he'll try to pit you one from another? He'll even try to pit the man against the woman, the husband against the wife. Yes. Friend against friend. Yes. That's how the devil works. But you have to realize one something tonight, that the devil, he's the author of confusion. Yes. He don't want you to do what God wants you to do. I, do you hear what I'm saying tonight? The devil's going to be on one shoulder. The devil comes to church every night. Every night we come, he comes. Yep. Sometimes people bring the devil with them. They listen to the voice of the devil. They won't listen to what God says. They'll say, well, I can do this. I can do this by myself. When you find out, as time goes on, you find out that you can't do it for yourself. You've got to rely upon a God. A God that's got all power in heaven and earth. And you know what? I thank God for the truth. How many thank God for the truth tonight? I thank you for it tonight. We are a privileged people. We are royalty tonight. You hear me tonight? We are royalty tonight. We are God's children. We are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We are his children. You are his children. You've got the best of everything. You know what? There's not enough gold and silver in this world that I would change my life to give for what the Lord's got in store for each and every one of us. It's going to be worth it if you could just press your way through and endure to the end. He said, he that endure to the end, he, he said, the same shall be saved. But you see something? You've got some enduring to do. Every one of us has got some enduring to do. We've got to endure our troubles. We've got to endure our trials. But I want you to listen to one thing. Hold your place right there just a minute. And I might get to that. Now go with me to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. And listen to this tonight. I like this a lot of times. I think about this. When we was a kid in school, we used to have a teacher. And she had a little box on her desk. And she had notes in it. And she'd take those cards out. And she'd read a Bible scripture to us each and every morning. Today, you can't do that. Nope. Can't you see how the devils even come into the schools and we wonder why our children is like they are. It's not even safe. People today say it's not even safe in a church. Mm -hmm. It may not be. Somebody could come in here, blow me out of this pulpit. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm still going to serve God. Yes. I'm, not going to, I'm not going to quit preaching if somebody would come in here and God forbid but if they put a gun to, to my head and say you quit preaching or we're going to put you to death they would just have to preach uh, to shoot me because that's how much that I fear God because I know when I leave this old body I know that God has got a better place for me to go I, and when we leave this old body if you're right with God God's got a better place for you and that's what I'm looking for this is not my home. I'm just a pilgrim. I'm passing through this old world. And you know what? I've got to be obedient to God's word. And I've got to trust God all the way through. And even in a lot of schools. It's not even safe in a school. It's not even safe to go to the supermarket. Amen. The devil just has to put in somebody's mind to go in there and blow that place up. But the thing about it is, are you ready? That's what you've got to ask yourself this morning, tonight. Am I ready? Am I ready to meet God? How many is ready to meet God tonight? If God would call you out of here tonight, are you ready to meet him? You know what? A lot of people take this question for granted. They say, ah, God's not going to take me. <clears throat> How do you know that? God has set a bound that you're not going to pass that bound that he sent. Every one of us has been a bound set. I don't know when my time comes. You don't know when your time is coming. But he did say be ready. I want to be ready to meet him, don't you? Listen to what he says. In the 23rd chapter of the book of Psalms. This is very, I'm sure everybody's heard this. But I want to read it again tonight. 23rd chapter of Psalms. 
Start at the first, the first verse. <clears throat> and I want you to listen to what he says. David here was doing the talking. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. Did you hear that, church? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Amen. There's no one. Listen, God will give you your heart's desire, but there's things that you've got to do. You've got to follow God, and you've got to keep a praying to God no matter what you go through, no matter what kind of trial you face in your life. God is bigger than anything that we face tonight. Amen. God is bigger than any disease. I believe in the healing God. I believe with all of my heart, yes. soul, mind, and strength, that God is able to touch that person that's right on their deathbed. Yes. God is the only one that can lift them up. But the Lord is my shepherd. Right. I shall not want. When you're going through troubles and trials, remember that. I shall not want. Lord, I'm a seeking to you, Lord. Lord, I'm praying to you. Lord, I'm seeking you, Lord. Lord, you said you'd never leave me, Lord. You said you'd never leave me. You would never forsake me. But you'd be with me always, even to the end of the world. And when my time comes, you know what? I thank God that one day that I'm going to see God. But the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He's a leading me and guiding me all the way. God wants to lead you and guide you uh, all the way to the end. Uh, that's the kind of God that we're serving. We're serving a loving God, a compassionate God. And I'll tell you one thing. Why wouldn't anybody want to serve a God like that? You know what the difference is between us and the world? We've got God to comfort us. The world has nobody to comfort it. The only peace in your life that you're going to find in this whole world is going to be Jesus Christ. That's the only peace that you'll find in your life is when you get turned your life around and you come to God and you make it up in your mind. You see, there's something that you have to do. We think that God is such a big God that he's going to come down here and he's going to turn your life around automatically, that there's nothing that you have to do. You don't have to pray. You don't have to repent. That's the things that the world is teaching today. It's not repentance. They just walk down the aisle making fun, just a laughing and a smiling, chewing their bubble gum all the way to the altar. Somebody will get down with them and say, well, have, did you repent? They'll say, yeah. They say, well, you're saved. I, and today, we're living in a time today where people say you don't even have to be baptized. But he said, he that believeth and is baptized, he said, shall be saved. But he said, he that believeth not shall be damned. You know what? People today preaching, only thing that you have to do is ask for God for forgiveness. I, you don't have to go to that water. But I thank God that I obeyed the voice of God. And when God told me that I had to go to the water and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to get my sins remitted, then I had to go to the water to get my sins remitted. That's the only way that you can do it. The preacher can't forgive you. The preacher can't set you free. Only one that can set you free is Jesus Christ. But there's something that you've got to do. I've heard people there, a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to wait till my deathbed. You know what I'll tell you? I want you to listen to me tonight. Listen to me about that. There's nowhere in the Bible that people read it right down to the last time to ask God for forgiveness and made it into heaven. But I want you to listen to me tonight. You've got a chance. You've got a chance. And here's your chance. If you can ask God for forgiveness and you can repent and you can be baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost, that quickly, then you've got a chance. But do you think that you're going to have a chance? How many people tonight has God called and given chance after chance, but they just keep turning it away? Keep turning it away. Won't listen to God's word. Says, I don't have to do that. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. Your way is not good enough. It's only God's way that's good enough. And you know what? I'm glad tonight that I learned to listen to the voice of God. And listen to what he said. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. Amen. I like that one. When we're going through trouble, some waters a lot of times, trouble just flowing one right after the other. You look at what Job, what happened to Job. You know what? Job lost everything that he had. He lost all of his possessions. He lost all of his family, one right after another. It wasn't one just here and there, but it was one right after another. But you know what? The Bible said that Job, even though he lost everything that he had, the Bible says he took time to worship God. Amen. Boy, don't that make you feel bad. Amen. We go through a little trouble. The devil knocks us down, and we say we can't go on the further. We begin to have a pity party, begin to feel sorry for ourselves, begin to put ourselves in that cave of gloom. How many have been in that cave of gloom? Amen. And you know who put me there? I did because I didn't want to do what God said. I felt sorry for myself and I didn't feel like praying. I, I didn't feel like seeking God and I began to have a pity party for old self. And you know what? That's what the devil wants. He wants you to have a pity party for old self. Quit praying. Quit seeking God. That's what he'll tell you. Don't come to church no more. You don't have to come to church. Today, they've already took baptisms out of the church. Today, they're even taking God out of the church. There's no truth in a lot of churches. And the only place and way that you can serve God is in spirit and in truth. Children, God is a coming. And if we ain't in truth, we're going to be left behind. And listen to what he says. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his what? For his name's sake. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Is that his name? Yeah. And he told us what we had to do in order to get our sins remitted. He said to repent. That's the very first thing that you've got to do. You've got to repent of your sins. Then you've got to go down to the water. You've got to be buried in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then you've got to go on and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way that you can get your sins remitted. No such thing as deathbed repentance. No such thing as deathbed repentance. You know what? It would be a shame. I don't believe God's going to take anybody out of this old world without first giving them a chance. Right. He said he calls man you ain't once and you ain't twice, but he wouldn't proceed. How many people today has God knocked on your heart? Yeah. Yeah. But you said, not now, Lord. Not now, not now Lord. Too late. It's not my time. It's his time. When God calls you, that's when he wants you. That's when you've got to make the choice and you've got to make the decision in your life. It's the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. The devil will be there to hound you. And you know what? I remember one time when I come to church and I repent. And this elderly lady one time had a lot of confidence in her. She came up to the altar. She laid her hands upon me and began to pray. And I knew she had my best interest at heart. She was a praying that God would hear my prayer. But the whole time that she was there praying for me, the devil was there too. And he said, I want you to look at that. Tell that woman to get her hands off you. She has no business with her hands upon you. You know, she was an elderly woman. She was trying to do what she knew to all to do. She was trying to do right. But you know what? That old devil, he was right there too. He was trying to tell me, get up from there. Leave the church. That's what he wanted me to do. Because you know why? He wanted me because God had got something for me to do. And he didn't want me to do it. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 That's the reason the devil's after you. He's after each and every one of us. And you know what? If we would do our job as good as the devil does his, we'd have a whole lot better church. Amen? Amen. Amen? We would have a whole lot better church. I think we've got a fine church. Yes. Amen? Amen. we got a fine church. A bunch of fine people. Amen. And you know what? It's our duty to try to tell people what they've got to do 
in order to be saved. The Bible says repent or perish. That's your choice tonight. You've got to repent or your other choice is to perish. That's your choice tonight. But you're the one that's got to make the decision. When God knocks upon your heart, that's when God wants you. I remember one time, and I know a lot of you people know what the church up in the hall was. We used to have theater seats in the church that you sat in. And I remember as a young boy sitting in the back of the church in Sunday school. People say, God don't work in Sunday school. I beg your pardon. <coughs> I know he works in Sunday school. Yes. I felt his power in Sunday school. The strongest call that I ever got as a young boy. I was sitting back in the church and my brother-in-law at the time the, the day, well he said my ex-brother-in-law was sitting beside me and I felt the power of God. I never ever in my life felt such strong drawn power as God had laid down upon me that first morning. And I had to make a decision that God was knocking upon my heart. I knew that it was God because I never ever felt nothing like that in my life. You know what? I've been caught out in the ocean in a tide and it seemed like something had my foot and was a foot me, pulling me back and I thought that I was going to drown and I thought that I was going to have to start screaming for help. That's how strong it felt. That's what the power of God is. When God comes down upon you and begins to try to draw you and begins to call you home, I felt the power of God grab a hold of me and try to drew me out of that seat. God was a draw on me. And I grabbed the arms of that chair until the veins in my arm popped up because I thought, Lord, I'm too young to serve you, Lord. I can't serve you now. And you know what? I let that power come down upon me. I let it go. And God didn't be able to deal with me for years. But I thank God. One day, God called me and said, it's time to make a choice. God had mercy. And God have compassion upon me. Yes. And he'll have mercy and he'll have compassion upon you tonight. Yes. But you're the one that's got to make the call. Yes. And I'll tell you one thing tonight. The devil's beat you up with a lot of things. Don't let him beat you up with them no more. Yes. That old devil's a liar and the father of yes. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants everything that you got. But you know what? He can't touch what you've got. The only thing that you've got to do, uh, you've got to say, Lord, I'm not going with you. I'm giving everything to the devil. And that's what you do when you turn your back upon God. You know what? Just like he said tonight, the way of the transgressor is hard. People say this is not no hard way. Well, it is a hard way. If we just but if we just give it to God, it'll be a whole lot easier. Right. People's going to ridicule you and say, look how those people live. Our people over here don't dress like that. They don't talk like this. They don't go to those places like that. You know what? When God called me out of the sin, out of the life of sin, I had no desire to do those things no more. When I fully repented, I said when I fully repented, I had no desire to do those. Yes, I drank, I gambled, but you know what? When God come and he took those things out, I never had a desire to drink no more. Amen. God had made a change in my life. Amen. Not only that, but he took a lot of other things from me too. I did things that I'm so ashamed of that I couldn't mention to people. But you know what? God knew about them. Yes. God knew about them. And God had enough mercy and enough compassion upon me to forgive me. I didn't have to tell my pastor everything that I did. You don't have to tell your pastor everything that you did, what you've done in your life. Only thing you have to do is tell Jesus. I, he's the only one that can forgive sins. I can't forgive nobody's sins. I, I can't save nobody, but Jesus can. Jesus can turn your life around and up if you only let him. I, but you've got to make that decision in your life that you're going to do what's right. That's right. Make it up in your mind. Count the cost. Count the cost. You know what? Sometimes I admire people when they say, well, I'm waiting. Maybe they haven't counted the cost. Maybe they're counting the cost. But when you count the cost, after you find out that there's a God there that's able to take all those desires away, you might be hooked on alcohol. You might be hooked on drugs. But children, God is there to take those things away. Right. Amen. 
But you've got to make it up in your mind that you want to go with God. You can't straddle the fence like a lot of people do today. A lot of people want to be straddle fences, want to be a, a cowboy, so to speak. They want to straddle the fence. They don't want to go on this side. They don't want to go on that side. They don't want to stand for the Lord. But when you come for God, you've got to make it up in your mind that you're going to go all the way, that you're going to take a stand, and you're going to do what's right. And I'm telling you tonight, when you take a stand for God, you're going to be persecuted for what you're doing. I want you to know that tonight. God, listen, he'll see you through. But you've got to make it up in your mind that you're going to do what God says. Have the call and make sure you've got sufficient funds to make it all the way through. Amen. Listen to what he says. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now listen to what he says. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Aren't you glad that you don't have to fear no evil tonight? No matter what you're going through. You know, one time I remember there was a storm coming. And we lived down the road from where we live now. And I remember the wind was a-blowing. And something told me. Said, go pray. And you know what? It had been easy for me to say, not now, Lord, I don't have time. But that storm was a coming in and it was a rolling. I went down beside my bed and I began to pray. I prayed there for a while and after a while I got up, I looked through the window and right through on the hillside, it's like the wind come right around the hillside and trees was a falling down. I seen trees, big trees, laying on the hillside and laying partly in my yard. If I hadn't listened to the voice of God, those trees could have fell on my house and could have killed me that fast. I wouldn't have had time to repent. I wouldn't have had time to say, God, have mercy upon me. That's how fast Jesus is coming. He's coming in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, he's a coming. And he's coming after me. And he's a coming after you. But one thing that he said, children, if you want to make it with God, you've got to be ready. And let me finish with this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Aren't you glad that God is with you tonight? No matter what you're going through tonight, hold to that promise that God is with you. No matter what you face in your life, remember that God is with you. And just like he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm glad tonight that I've got that greater living down in my heart. Aren't you glad tonight that you've got that greater, that you've got something greater than anything that's out there in that world? Got that greater. I said, you don't hear me tonight. I said, you glad tonight that you got that greater? Hey, man, I'm glad tonight for that greater that lives down inside me, that lives down inside you. Listen, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of thine enemies. Amen. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thank God for that oil. That my cup runneth over. Amen. I'm glad tonight. When God gives you that anointing uh, and that oil begins to run down uh, and that oil begins to flow uh, and I'm glad tonight, I'm glad tonight that Jesus said until my cup runneth over that I can't hold no more. I'm glad tonight for that anointing oil that God has promised to each and every one. Amen. And Holy Ghost, children, will lead you and guide you. Amen. Amen. It will comfort you in the time of trouble. Sure. It will be right there with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never be to forsake you, but I'll be with you all the way to the end. And listen to me, Finn says. Sure, sure, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know what? That's what I want tonight. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God has went away to prepare a place. 
for each and every one of us. But children, don't turn your back upon God. I want you to look what he's done for each and every one of us. Without him, we wouldn't have that chance of eternal life. He said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I'm glad tonight that I got my sins remitted uh, the way the book said. Uh, and that's the only way tonight. This is the only plan of salvation uh, that God written is right there hanging on the wall. Acts 2.38. You can't get in no other way. People say, the, third, the worst thing people try to do is say, well, what about grandma and grandpa? They were baptized in Matthew 28, 19. Grandma and grandpa might have lived in all the life that they knew. Mm -hmm. But there's more light shining today. Yeah. You know better. You know better. Yep. You've come to church. You've heard God's word. You've heard the plan of salvation. Yep. You know what you should do. But you know what? God's not going to make you do anything. God's calling here tonight. He's telling you to come home. Right. You've been away far enough, long enough. Children, let's all stand tonight. Let's get a song ready tonight.